Last week on here first. This is you're playing long ball. Uh, you're, yeah. This is the long game. Uh, this is the the short term effect is uh, the immediate impact on your own people. Like we're actually doing outreach. The long term effect is this is th that's my church. Even if they've never been right, I've heard people say that about my church because exactly. we call ourselves a neighborhood church. Like, yeah. oh no, that's my church. Like you've never even you've never even been to a service, but you're still my church. Why? Because you're the church in my neighborhood. And I'm somehow connected to you through some of your people. That's the, that's where you want to be as a church. Welcome to our podcast here first. I'm Ridge Bogerson. This is a podcast where we just tell people what we're doing at Chester First Baptist Church and just a way to share with them our God-driven ideas. And as always, I am joined with... Senior Pastor, Dr. Mike Bogerson. How you doing, Rich? I'm doing all right. We are joined with a very special guest, Dr. Sam Rayner. Hey, it is awesome to be with you guys. Hey, we are looking at Pray and Go. In fact, CFBC is going to be starting the Pray and Go ministry uh, in our context starting in July. Mm -hmm. And we've spent all month of June in a four-part sermon series uh, that came with the uh, Pray and Go resource. We we modified it. We, we called it living in a prayer series and we used a Bon Jovi theme of living in a prayer. And we've spent three weeks kind of talking about the biblical aspect of what pray and go means. Mm -hmm. What can my prayer volunteers anticipate from our community in response to pray and go? What are some of the stories from the front lines? Yeah. Two things. Uh, expect a positive response from some people and expect a negative attack from Satan. Wow. So, are, are you going to experience spiritual warfare when you start reaching out to your community? Yes, you will. Absolutely, you will. Um, so expect good things. Expect positive responses. Let's do kingdom work, expecting God to do great things. But let's also expect the enemy to step up his game once churches start reaching out. Sure. So I, I, would, I would say prepare yourself in prayer for a spiritual battle, too. Um, and I think that would be at the very beginning. I think we could do that with the folks who are praying before they go. Uh, that would be our, our folks who are praying for our teams when they go, mm -hmm. but actually pray for protection for yeah. them and a hedge of protection for the families and the church as as we connect with the community with pray and go. I like that. And thank you for reminding us of that, Sam. Yeah, um, spiritual warfare is going to be a real, real big thing. Churches that do outreach experience spiritual warfare. Okay, very good. The good thing is it's not our battle. The battle belongs to the Lord. So we'll just right. let, let him take care of that mess. Um how are feedback stories from the front lines communicated back to our director, directors and coordinators? How do how do we get those stories? Yeah, it, it's almost worth a follow up meeting with everyone who went out and get them in a room and just say, all right, guys, we want to hear your stories so that people can build upon each other. Um, you know, a lot of times there's a um, always whenever I'm at a meeting and. I ask people for feedback. I always just say, all right, it takes one person, right? You know, when, when we do a laying on of hands in our service and all right, everyone, let's come forward. Nobody moves. It's just like, it just takes one person. And I'll even say it just one. If one person will come forward, the rest of you will come forward too. And the one person will get up and then I'll come. So get them all in a room and just say, all right, one person start sharing. And then others will start piggybacking on that. And I think that's probably the best way to get feedback. It's also your opportunity to um, to interact with those who went out as, as the pastor and just, you know, talk to them as well. Um, so I just do a follow-up meeting. Considering doing a quarterly pray and go celebration. Yeah. Uh, for our, our prayer warriors and folks who are involved in that. And then use that as a time to, to a say out of a way at a girl, but number two, to share, uh, stories from the front lines. Uh, would that be a good thing? I think so. I think a quarterly meeting would work. Um, I think, uh, anytime you have the opportunity to encourage your people when they're doing the right thing, that's a that's that's a positive move. And I wouldn't, you know, a lot of encouragement. You know, there's there's times you're going to have to call out sin in the church. There's times you're going to have to really do some hard things and make some hard decisions. This is the time to encourage your people that are doing well and to build a culture of outreach. Very good. Is there a pray and go bumper video available anywhere? I don't know. I, I would Google search just like you. <laughs> there may be someone out there who's done it. Our yeah. people love bumper videos. Like when we do a sermon series and everything, we'll like usually make an in-house bumper video, like a little trailer. 
And I, we were wondering if there was one for pray and go specifically. And we looked, and we didn't know if you had one stashed away. Or we, not. I, I don't. But I wouldn't. Uh, man, it sounds like you're creative. Go for it. Uh, you would probably make one better than we could. Okay. Well, that answers that question. What is the number one story back in the day? Dave Chappelle had a thing on his show called "When When Being Real Goes Wrong." Has there ever been? Do you know a story of when pray and go went wrong? <laughs> well, I'm sure. I'm sure it has. I mean, I'm I'm sure that there's uh, there's somebody out there who uh, had a bad day and just you know ended up yelling at a neighbor instead of praying for him. Um, be, so, I, you know, I can I think of think of my own life where I should have been reaching out to my neighbor and instead I was shaking my fist at him. Right. Um, you know, we've all done that. Uh, there will be times when things don't go the way that they should. And we all have those cantankerous members who uh, perhaps don't interact with others as well as they should. It's just their personality. So you're, you're going to experience, um, you're going to experience negativity because of the spiritual attack. You're going to experience negativity because somebody didn't interact the way that they should have. You're going to experience negativity because you went to somebody's house and it was just a really bad time for them. And what I would say as you do this program is just let people know that on the front end and ju just say, let's, if we have a bad encounter, let's try to assume the best of that person. Maybe they got bad news right before you were walking around and they were wondering what you were doing. M maybe, you know, may maybe they just learned that that medical bill was three times what they were expecting and, and they're just not in the mood right now. That's an even more of an opportunity to pray for that person. So even when you have the negative encounters, let's revert back to prayer. So this is pray and go. And so when you have to quote unquote retreat for whatever reason, like that house is not open right now. You, you, even as you fall back, you pray. Um, and then you move forward again. It, it, a lot of church life and a lot of outreach programs, three, three steps forward, two steps back. I mean, yeah. that's the way the church works. That's the way outreach works. Uh, just real quick, while we wrap these things up, Sam, just I've got three questions and just hit them quick. Your thoughts on brightly colored shirts, hoodies, or vests for the prayer volunteers as they're walking? A anything that doesn't look threatening. So okay. if you want to wear colors or whatever, yeah, just make sure people are dressed in a way that um, is non-threatening. When they're in the Crips neighborhood, they should dress as Crips. And in the Blood neighborhood, they should dress as Bloods. If if that is your context, then yes. Okay. Then yes. Uh, thinking about doing various levels of commitment uh, for Pray and Go, can uh, a 4, 6, and a 12, can you commit to one quarter a year or every other month, which would be six? Or would, could you volunteer to do something once a month? Uh, that would be the 12. Yeah. What do you think of that? I like it as long as your people are used to it and it's not confusing to them. Um, when you don't have clarity, people are less inclined to participate. So as long as you can give those options with clar clarity, you should be fine. Would there be any wealth? Would there be any benefit to giving those options, Sam? In my church... I, and what I typically recommend is I prefer uh, people to sign up for a six-month emphasis or a three-month emphasis. So three to six months, wait another six months, and then do it again. Um, but if you're wanting to have Pray and Go ongoing, yes. then, then your options would be fine. Okay. That, we, it will be an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. um, we've made it a point to let our people know that this is not an invite your one. Gotcha. Uh, this is not a this is not a, a one and done. This is an ongoing campaign. Uh, lastly, how how do we effectively plug pray and go into our small groups? Uh, we we we're not doing Sunday school even yet. We are doing connect groups, connect groups on group. Wednesday night, which has kind of replaced our our Sunday school. Uh huh. Uh, and we do those six weeks at a time. Take two weeks off. Come back and do six weeks. It's, it's working out. We do a, a fellowship meal. Uh, but how do we plug Pray and Go into the Connect groups? Yeah, I w the easiest way I know how to do that is just to, you know, when, whenever you're doing your mapping and you're, we're going to go to this segment of the community, this segment of the community, and this segment of the community, you assign a segment to a group. So each group has its own segment. That, that way you also know if they're getting the job done. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, I am out of time. Brother Sam, thank you so much for your time. Um, is there anything, anything else you want to tell us? No, I just want to say I'm grateful that you're using the program. I'm grateful to your church that they're participating. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm encouraged by uh, more churches doing outreach. So that's a good thing. So I'm excited for you and I'm excited for your church. Absolutely, brother. I appreciate it. I'll give you just one piece of good news from the front lines. Please. We do, we've done the drive in on State Street. And that's just a drive in we do on Friday nights in Chester. Uh, we've shown the Goonies, the greatest showman. We're showing the Sandlot. Friday night. Friday night, and we're showing Top Gun, Top Gun. on July 2nd. Um, we actually, uh, we have an inflatable screen and all, uh, offer food. We had our first family come to church on Sunday morning because they saw us in the parking lot doing this. They brought their blanket and sat on our concrete, and we just loved up on them, and they were at church Sunday morning. Ah, oh, that's great. And, that's great. Yeah, and... Uh, I told my church uh, Sunday, I said, guys, for, this is our first, I said, a, a family is here for the very first time as a result of what you all are doing on Friday night. And I want you to know God is, God is blessing that yeah. and God is using that. Um, and the, I, I didn't tell the, the, our guest family that we were going to do that. And I didn't single them out by name or anything, uh, but I thought it was important to let our church know that victory is happening. Uh, yep. we're, we're winning some things. So uh, it's, it's good. So there, God's, God's moving here. Brother, thank you so much for, thank for joining us. Thank you so much. Us. Thank you for joining us for our podcast here first. This was the second episode in our little two episodes with Sam Rayner. It was awesome having him on there. You know, my dad and I, we're like two fanboys. We watch his podcast two times a week, Rayner on Leadership and the EST podcast. So that was an awesome experience. Thanks to him for being on there. And also, we have church Saturday night at 5 p.m. We also have church Sunday morning at 10.30 p.m. Hope to see you there. This podcast is brought to you by Chester First Baptist Church. Their vision is to love God, love people, and they're trying to live like Jesus. We hope to see you there this weekend. God bless. Yeah.